Bruchim Aboim. Thank you for coming. Uh, tonight's topic will be giving and taking advice, something that is difficult on both ends. And we want to look at it from two different uh, viewpoints, secular and religious. Um, really, secular approaches uh, that consulting adults, uh, as long as nobody's bothering you, mind your own business. And uh, if somebody wants to do something and it's wrong, you really don't need to get involved. It'll generally turn around and bite you, so why get involved and nobody really wants to hear it anyways. On the other hand, religiously, it becomes a problem. Um, because religiously, we believe in the concept of Avravis, that the Jews at Mount Sinai accepted this concept of culpability. If you will, all Jews are considered to be one body. If you ask someone how they're feeling and their toe hurts, they're not going to say, I feel great, but my toe hurts. And bad news for my toe, but I'm great. If your toe hurts, you hurt. But it's even more than that. Amazingly, you get a paper cut. Your whole day's totally messed up because of a paper cut. Didn't even bleed. Seems like everything you do bumps into that paper cut. Just a paper cut. So every person... Every Jew is connected to everyone uh, on a positive and on a negative net level. When Madoff was found to be the biggest thief in history, you didn't steal a penny, but most Jews feel, did it have to be a Jew? Um, on the other hand, when somebody wins a Nobel Prize, you don't even know what the, play, what the, what the reason he was given a Nobel Prize for or what science or whatever it was. You have no idea, but you feel better because somehow it's a compliment to you. And it's an interesting phenomenon. Where does this come from? So the Torah in the portion of Kedoshim tells us, that a person should surely rebuke his neighbor. In a double term, we'll talk about that. And then it finishes off, and you should not bear a sin because of him. So why a double term? And the answer is, physician, heal thyself. If you're going to tell someone about something they're doing wrong, and you're doing the exact thing wrong, he's not going to listen to a word you say. If anything, you're going to cause a bit of a problem for both of you. So before you say anything to anyone, in fact, there's a famous case in the Gemara, or Mishnah, where there was a rabbi who was judging a case about a tree hanging over in the public domain. And he had a tree that was doing that. So before he heard the case, he took down that tree. And when the defendant came, to the court, he said, Rabbi, you have the same tree. And he said, no, I don't. So you cannot uh, criticize or try to help someone in the sense if you have that fault. Uh, so you really need to correct yourself before you go to someone else. And also, double term, you don't have to say it right away. Think first about how best to approach it. So first think about it and then speak it. There's no, you don't have to rush in. And not only that, I think that people do listen to other people who have been there, who have experienced it. That makes a difference. Sometimes you need to be the right person. You know, there's a lot of people that theorize everything. It doesn't work. Uh, when you've been there and done it and you go to someone and you can commiserate, commiserate with them, um, they kind of listen because you understand. When you try to theorize about what they're going through, it doesn't hold much water. Uh, in fact, it's interesting. I tell a story of a rabbi. Great rabbis, uh, even today, will listen to people's problems. Uh, people will come to see them. And there was this great rabbi who locked his door after seeing someone for three days. Then after three days, he opened up the door and told his attendant that he would see people again. And after he was done that night, the attendant came to him, the shamus, and said, three days? Three days you don't see people? You know, people are backed up here. Every, you would see many, many people. Came, it turned into hundreds. And the rabbi said to him, when I see people and with their problems, I have to look into myself to find that problem, that deficiency. And then I'm able to give them advice. He said, the, three days ago, someone came to me with a problem that was so evil that it took me three days to find it within myself for me to be able to deal with it. So again, to be a part of it when you talk to someone is important. And in, in Pirkei Avos, in the Ethics of the Fathers, 
Hashem ben Elazar says, do not placate your friend in the moment of his anger. Do not comfort him while his dead lie before him. Do not question him about the details of his vow at the moment he makes it. And do not try to see him at the time of his degradation. Timing. Timing is everything. And you need to think about that. That there's no necessity, unless it's, it's something that is a hot pot, is what I was compared to. If it's something that's an emergency, you get, so you get burned to save someone's life. But truth of the matter is when the pot cools off, you can hold it forever. So in cooler heads, and that's what it's saying here, there, you have to decide when's the best time to approach a topic of being able to help someone to give him advice and for him to accept the advice. You know, smart people learn from their mistakes. Brilliant people from others. And that really becomes the key. You need to appreciate the fact of someone giving you advice and, and putting themselves out. It's not always easy to know. Some people, you know, all the time, they, they, they're, they're foolish. But which really, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous and many of the programs deal with sponsors of finding someone that you can talk to, someone who's in the program, someone who's been through it, someone that can help you, seeing a therapist, a friend, a mentor. But it has to be someone you can be completely honest with. If you can't be completely honest with someone, then you're wasting your time. It needs to be someone that you can open your heart to and that they can be honest with you. You know, the best way to grow is by connecting to others. Others see you more honestly than you see yourself. We're all kind of find it hard to be honest with ourselves. Again, the forest because of the trees. Really don't see it as clearly as someone else would. But the problem is, it's, and it's very sad, many times the best advice and not because they want to do it, that we get is from enemies. They hit us dead between the eyes with our faults. Now, again, it doesn't mean everything an enemy tells you is true, because sometimes it's just done to hurt. But the truth is you need to listen to it. It says with Moshe, when he had a rebellion, he fell on his face to the ground to decide whether what they were talking about was real. Did they really have a point? Was there something wrong with him? And then when he found it wasn't, he was able to deal with it. But when someone, even someone who is your enemy, many times will tell you what your friends won't. Either because they love you so much they don't want to hurt you, or because you're such a strong personality that when someone tells you anything, you shut them down. And when you shut them down, what you do is shut the door to advice. I always say in a meeting of any of my advisors, I want to be the stupidest guy in the room because that makes me the smartest. Because if I can hear their advice, if a man who surrounds himself with yes men learns nothing, all he does is get praise, which is useless. Finding someone who's a contrarian, has a different viewpoint, is someone you can learn from. And again, we've talked about in our lectures about marriage, about A's and B's, about a husband and wife being two different personalities, which helps you to grow. But because God set it up, it doesn't mean you don't have to be tactful doesn't mean you can say that everything on your mind whenever you want because there's a time when your spouse will listen and there's a time when you will create a big argument and again that pot analogy you don't have to pick up a hot pot what you can do is wait till that pot is cool and then discuss things and then all of a sudden both of you come out of it closer and you both learn from what happens you know and as I've said before how you present the comment to say to someone, I know you're not going to like hearing this, you might as well not say anything. Because you've set them up for a negative. It has to come from a positive place. Something of, I'm sure you don't realize, you know, what a wonderful person you are when you do that. You know, how people perceive it. I know you're not coming from that place. But whatever it might be, but something positive. So the person might listen to it. And what's interesting, as much as it is a mitzvah to give advice, it's also a good deed not to tell someone something. If you know they can't listen to it, they won't listen to it. The famous story of Yisrael, was told of Israel of Rizion that he would take a walk every night with his attendant, his Shamus. And one day they walked into a part of the town, a wealthy part of town, where he had no followers. And his attendant, his Shamus, was surprised that they were walking. And then all of a sudden he turned up a walk 
and went to a big house and knocked on the door. Really didn't know who lived there. And the man who answered the door was the president of the bank. And the rabbi was greeted by the president and he saw that he invited the rabbi in. And they went into his parlor and he offered the rabbi a seat and the rabbi sat down. And for 15 minutes, the rabbi sat there and didn't say a word. And the banker looked at the shamus and he kind of motioned, what's this about? And the shamus goes, I don't know. And this went on for 15 minutes, not a word was spoken. After 15 minutes, the rabbi got up, thanked the banker. The banker walked him to his door and bid him good night. And the banker then stepped out with the rabbi and walked the rabbi all the way home. And when the banker got there, they never spoke a word. And when they got to the rabbi's house, the banker said to the rabbi, you know, it would have been rude for me to ask you when you came to my house, but you came to my house, you didn't say a word. Why did you come to my house? And the rabbi says, I came to your house because there was something I wanted to ask you, but I knew you couldn't do it. But if I didn't come to your house, then I couldn't fulfill the commandment of not asking you. So I came to your house and didn't say anything because I know you can't do it. And the banker says, well, how do you know I can't do it? Ask me, maybe I can. He says, I know you can't. And the banker said, but maybe I can. The rabbi says, no, I know you can't. So finally, the banker pushes the rabbi, and his rabbi says to the banker, you know the widow who lives on the outskirts of the city? Her house is being foreclosed. What I want you to do is give her the house. He says, I can't do that. He says, exactly. That's why I didn't ask you. And the banker then turned and walked away mumbling to himself. Two days later, the widow was given the deed to her house free and clear. So there's even a thing of not talking to someone. You know, when you see someone drowning and you don't know anything about saving someone of, 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 being, of being a lifeguard, of jumping into the water and saving someone, don't jump in. The end will be that both of you will drown. On the other hand, throw him a life ring. Go get someone that is an expert and knows what to do. And he'll very easily save the person. A person needs to know his limitations. At the same time, you cannot turn away from You can have a deaf ear. You can't act like it didn't happen. You have a responsibility. If you can help someone, and if it's not you, if you can find help for that person, then you need to do that. You need to find a way to help someone else. You need to see everyone as important to you as your family. You know, if you saw someone lying in the gutter and you didn't know them and they were drunk in their own filth, you'd walk by and shake your head and say, what a waste of humanity. What if, it's, what if it was someone's friend that you knew, their son? Then what would you do? You'd probably bend over, stop, and ask if there's something you can do and in some way try to help the young man. What if it was your own child? You'd grab him, grab him by the scruff of his neck and you'd drag him home. You're not going to leave him sit, stay, laying there in the gutter. And you're going to do what you have to do to help. And that's why you need to see every other person. You can't just walk away. You need to find something either by yourself or trying to help to want someone for them to get the advice that they need. And again, not everything is major. But sometimes small things become big things. And if we don't correct them, they just continue to grow. And people don't even realize it. People are oblivious. And again, this excuse of, but this is who I am. And the answer is, that is never an acceptable answer. Who I am is where we start. And we ask for God to give us the strength to be able to give advice, and more importantly, to accept advice. And not only to criticize the person who gives it and feel bad about it, try to make them, but to openly thank them. And sometimes, even if you can't do it that day, to go up to them afterwards and thank them for taking, having the guts to tell you what they needed to tell you, to help you to be a better person. May God bless us all that we have an open ear and an open heart to that. And may we become better people and help others to become better as well. Thank you for coming.